I made a mistake. Sorry, you just saw it my nose just now. Hello, welcome to I bought something incorrect on Amazon and now I'm paying for the consequences. I've been in the process of replacing all of the artwork in my apartment or at least a lot of it that I did when I was long like when I was a lot younger a long time ago. I've gotten considerably better at painting and I would like to replace some of my like kind of very simple, very cringy looking artwork that I did in high school with stuff that looks a little bit more polished and refined, stuff that doesn't look like a seven-year-old did it. And I wanted to buy wooden canvases on Amazon because I actually like using wooden canvases regular, like over the regular kinds of canvases. I don't know why. I feel like it just absorbs the paint better and it just looks better whenever I use wooden canvases. What I thought I bought was a five pack of eight by 10 canvases and I ended up getting a 15 pack of this. This itty bitty microscopic flashcard size piece of piece of crap. Like, I mean, obviously people could probably use it for other things, but I don't know what the hell I'm going to use it for. Obviously, if I hang up a piece of art that size on my wall, it's going to look ridiculous. I'm going to be embarrassed. All of my friends are going to make fun of me and then collectively shun me, and I'm going to die, you know, alone and sad and friendless with an embarrassing piece of artwork hanging on my wall. So that's not an option. I'm trying to think of what I can do. At this point, like, I put off returning it a little bit too long and now I'm kind of stuck with it. I thought about maybe like using them for coasters because I use small wooden squares to make my coasters but there's something about using a, a rectangle shape as a as a coaster that just seems like it defies the laws of nature. Like I'm pretty sure that would just be completely unsettling and wrong in every conceivable way. I think the only option that I do have is to do like a collection of like all 15 of these canvases creating one larger effect like kind of how this painting behind me that my mom did for me is like on two canvases but it creates one picture i don't know if they're going to create the same picture or if they're just going to be like hung together to be like part of a set but i think that's the only option that i have so i guess i should just you know get my water jug get hydrated and get started on this on this endeavor <laughs> I think I almost just broke my desk. Okay, we gotta be careful. All right, let's go to the dining room and see what we can do with it. Update, table is still looking mighty nice, mighty beautiful. Notice I also kind of organized a little bit of my shit over there so it doesn't, you know, just have a giant bag of grits sitting on the ground. But, you know, she's looking good. She's looking beautiful. And I think this is where we're gonna do some of our brainstorming today. I just had a thought. When I was done taking the bar exam, I took the rest of the week off. I w the test was on a Monday and Tuesday, and I took Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off because obviously I'm not going to be a productive member of society after taking a bar exam during a pandemic. I did a lot of painting to keep myself from actually going insane, and what I ended up doing was I made a, um, ho a housewarming project for my boyfriend who was moving into his new apartment that weekend. I made a collection of his favorite movies, TV shows, and video games, and like made a painting dedicated to a character from each of those shows and movies or whatever that had the same Myers-Briggs type as him. If you don't know anything about Myers-Briggs types, it's essentially a personality test. There are 16 different personalities in the Myers-Briggs test. My mom, who's worked in talent development for a very long time, she is a beautiful, wonderful, genius, amazing person who also happens to know how to classify people and coach them using Myers-Briggs and like having them understand their personality type and how they can like use that type to their advantage as much as possible in the workplace. My mom has coached me and Nick in the past I am an INFP, Nick is an INTJ, um, and we're both very proud of our Myers-Briggs types. And whenever we watch TV shows or movies or whatever, we always try to look up online to see what characters are each types. And I thought, why not? I, why don't I just do that for my wall, but just do like an explosion of INFPs? Because I know there are a lot of really good ones in the INFP realm. 
and I think that could be really fun. You know, it's still like a very personal thing, like a lot of the artwork in my apartment, but it's different because it's themed. And I don't have a lot of these things hanging up in my apartment anywhere else. So I think it could be cool. But what I'm going to do right now is look up different INFPs to see what options I have and see if I can even come up with 15 that I can do artwork for and then go from there. I'm hungry. So I have compiled a list of I think about 18 to 20 Myers-Briggs INFP characters from movies, TV shows, video games that I play. <clears throat> and overall, I think the roster is pretty strong. Obviously, I left out, you know, some weaker links, like if it was from a show that I liked and I didn't, you know, enjoy that character very much, I omitted it from the list. But these are the best of the best. And honestly, like us INFPs, that's what we deserve. We deserve the best. So this is what we're looking at so far. This is my game plan. Let me walk you through it. So over here we have Mew from Pokemon. Um, this is Wanda's sign from Marvel, the cinematic universe at least. Um, this is Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers. This is Sun Eater from My Hero Academia. Um, hopefully his hand won't look, you know, quite like that when we put paint on it. Um, this is April Ludgate from Parks and Rec. This is her alter ego, Janet Snakehole. I saw an artwork that somebody did online of her like that, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I'm going to do something with that. This is Nagato slash Pain from the Naruto universe. Um, this is Lulu's hat from League of Legends. Um, she's not I'm not entirely confident she's an INFP, but my cat was named after her, and I saw one website that said she was, so... We're going with that. Um, this is Rose Apothecary for David Rose from Schitt's Creek. Um, this is the White Lotus from Avatar The Last Airbender because that's right, bitch, I Rose and INFP. I think we pretty much win this contest based on that alone. But this is Luna Lovegood's glasses from Harry Potter. This is a silhouette, a very bad silhouette of Luke Skywalker from Star Wars. Um, this is another one Well, I'll hopefully make it look like he's not holding a giant dildo. Um, this is... Probably a little more obscure. This is um, Kitten Mittens from It's Always Sunny's from Charlie Day. This is Gara's scar on his forehead from Naruto again. This is Castle Byers from Stranger Things. It's probably going to look a little bit more, you know, interesting than it does right now, but it's like his sign from his little fort in the woods. And this, of course, is Courage the Cowardly Dog sitting next to Courage the Cowardly Dog. Some might be wondering, what exactly is the Myers-Briggs personality test? Well, it's essentially a self-assessment questionnaire designed to make psychological types understandable and useful in our everyday lives. The test indicates various psychological preferences and how people perceive the world and make decisions. The test attempts to assign four categories, introversion or extroversion, sensing or intuition, thinking or feeling, or judging and perceiving. You can probably tell there's a lot that goes into Myers-Briggs types, and I highly recommend anyone interested to check out the Myers-Briggs website for more information. Information. And if you're curious as to what type you are, you can always take the free test at 16personalities.com. But please keep in mind that the test results may not be accurate as to your actual type, and it's always most accurate to learn your type from someone experienced and certified in Myers-Briggs personality types. All you need to know for the purposes of this video is that I'm an INFP, which means the following. I am introverted, intuitive, feeling, and perceiving. So essentially what that adds up to is perfection in human form. It's just basic math. I'm empathetic, generous, open-minded, creative, passionate and idealistic, but I am also, on the flip side, unrealistic, self-isolating, unfocused, emotionally vulnerable, desperate to please, and self-critical. I mean, honestly, I feel personally attacked by my weaknesses for the INFP personality type because that is literally me to a T. <laughs> Most of the listings for these INFPs that I'm painting for this project are courtesy of the website Personality Database, which once again you have to really take with a grain of salt because the postings of what characters from what TV shows and movies are in terms of Myers-Briggs types are from random internet people and not necessarily those well versed in Myers-Briggs. That said, I really did try to pick ones that I felt were close enough to my type based on what I know about me and what my mom has told me about Myers-Briggs. Mew here I could see being an INFP just because from what we've seen in Pokemon the first 
first movie of Mew, Mew is seen as someone that cares at all about all Pokemon, real or cloned, and looks to what the Pokemon are at the heart, not what the circumstances of their creation were. It's a small sample size of information given that Mew isn't really in the film that much, but I think you could make the fairly reasoned argument and you know, that's close enough for me. Mew also seems to be a very go with the flow, but also could kick the crap out of anyone that tries me type of Pokemon, and I don't know if that's really an INFP thing or what, but I personally relate to that. So basically, I am Mew, Mew is me, we are one. Fight me, bitch. The thing I'm going for with Mew and all my little INFP buds here is mainly a black and white theme with one little bit of pop of color to avoid clashing with the color explosion that is my table in my dining room. As you can see here, I'm echoing the color of Mew's eyes in the background, and I really like how it turned out. I tried keeping this theme for the rest of the paintings with, as you might see later on, varying degrees of success. Blue color of Mew's eyes are used to draw the little bubbles in the background, which is associated with Mew's portrayal in the film, so that's what I was going for with this one. I really think it turned out pretty good, I guess, but yeah, that's that's basically it. So our next person on the INFP roster is Iroh from Avatar The Last Airbender, and before we get to Iroh, we're about to witness the exact moment where I decide to stop taping my phone to random things in my apartment in order to film and just bite the bullet and buy a tripod on Amazon, and that moment should be occurring in three, two, one, now. So uh, anyways, Iroh is pretty much a slam dunk for the INFP team because in all honesty, Iroh is one of my favorite characters in any TV show that I've ever seen. He is absolutely wonderful and I really don't think I'm alone in thinking that. I could totally buy Iroh being an INFP based on what I know because he really very much goes with the flow. He has a deep seated set of values and most of all, he's incredibly empathetic. In all the ways that he deals with Zuko, and even with most of his enemies in the series, such as the Avatar Squad, Iroh shows empathy and a pro profound ability to relate to people's emotions. This is something very common for us INFPs, plus it really doesn't hurt that he can reflect lightning, something else that INFPs have been known to do historically. I don't know why they don't talk about that more on the Myers-Briggs website. I, I mean, I just, I don't know why that is, but it's absolutely true. I could definitely prove that if it weren't such a hassle to film that and prove it, but otherwise I would totally make a video about it. You guys know that. So for my boy Iroh, I'm painting a white lotus with an orange and red gradient to symbolize the Fire Nation. I have to admit as well that I never actually watched Avatar until I was an adult when Nick made me watch it, and I have to say I was completely blown away by the show. I mean, the fact that it's geared for kids, but it's so thoughtful and doesn't dumb down the content for a younger audience is really impressive, especially by today's standards. And I feel like I'm 15 years late to the Avatar fan club, but... I, you know, I'm here now and, you know, I'm all about it. Our next INFP here is the goodest boy that ever was, Courage the Cowardly Dog. As you might have seen from my table video, and if you haven't seen that video, please go check it out. It's a hoot. I freaking love Courage the Cowardly Dog, so I'm personally delighted to see that he's an INFP. Although I think one thing that we do have to keep in mind that my mom always reminds me of with talking about TV characters and movie characters is that they're generally not written to fit a specific personality type for Myers-Briggs. There might be some exceptions to that, but ultimately there's not always a clear-cut fit. Characters are usually written to serve plot functions, not to always be written like how people would normally act, so it's not always easy to say that a character is clearly one type or another, and I think Courage is pretty much an embodiment of that. We see Courage always having to deal with extreme situations from time to time, and it's really hard to say, based on those extreme situations, what his preferences in a given situation are, or what his true personality really is. What we can see, though, I would say Courage is pretty imaginative with how he has to figure out to deal with saving Muriel and Eustace from all their bullshit, and dealing with all the monsters running rampant in the middle of nowhere. He's also very much valuing his loved ones, and I think you can make the argument that his values of caring so much for Muriel and protecting his family is something that really drives pretty much all of his decisions throughout the show, because, I mean, really, Courage would probably just walk through Hellfire without a second thought, essentially, to save Muriel's dumbass. So there's another bit of INFP right there. He's also a very soft, sensitive boy, which is very relatable for us INFP types. So I decided with this Courage picture that I wanted to make it largely black and white, but just do a little bit of touch of this lilac color that is Courage's coat. And once again, to keep with the theme of mostly black and white with just a little hint of color, um, it came out a little bit more of a chaotic vibe than I was kind of hoping to go for. But I mean, Courage is kind of a chaotic show, so I, I guess, it's, guess it's pretty fitting, you know? 
Our next picture in this INFP project that I'm going to be working on is Luna Lovegood from the Harry Potter film series. Now, I say film series and I'm only going off of the movies because, and please to any of my friends that have been telling me for years to read the books, please don't kill me, but I haven't actually read Harry Potter. I know I need to, I know I need to, but law school has basically taken any little bit of desire that I would have to read in my spare time and just proceeded to brutally beat it out of me, so I know that I need to read them. I will, I promise, but I haven't yet. But anyways, back to Luna. I could definitely see Luna being an INFP for many reasons. Anytime we see Luna in these movies, she's pretty much off in her own little world, saying and doing things that people may perceive as strange. To some, and by some, I mean Hermione's judgmental ass. She's Looney Lovegood, but in reality, Luna just has a very active imagination, at least in my, my impression of her, something that us INFPs can very strongly relate to. She's constantly thinking about essentially anything other than what's going on in the present um, than what's right in front of her, but she also is able to think and see things in a way that's creative and unique, which is something of a strong suit not only for Luna, but for us my INFPs as well. Luna also tends to be a little bit all over the place, not really sticking to a rigid plan in life or in her everyday routine, but rather just going with where her imagination takes her, even if it means going without shoes. And she's also been known to be empathetic and really effectively relate to other people's emotions. We see this when she's communicating with Dobby and making him feel like a real person, and with Harry when they bond over the fact that they both lost parents in the past. It also doesn't hurt that Luna, just like yours truly, were both members of Ravenclaw, which according to my old roommate and de facto Harry Potter expert, prides itself on creativity and intelligence, two things that INFPs also happen to champion. So to honor my girl Luna, I'm painting her icon glasses that we see in the sixth Harry Potter movie to once again reinforce the idea that not only are INFPs creative and idealistic, but we also sometimes have the tendency to straight up serve looks as well. Just want to say again, while I'm not an expert on any of this whatsoever, and my opinion literally means nothing as to anything about Myers-Briggs, I do really enjoy learning about Myers-Briggs type a lot. From what I've learned and what I've read and what my mom has told me about it, it's really a great way for me at least to understand myself better and to understand the people around me, you know, understanding that people think differently, they look at the world differently, they have different types than me, which, you know, sounds like common knowledge, but I think sometimes we get wrapped up in our own bullshit at times that we sometimes forget that there are plenty of people out in the world that look at the world and see the world and process the world very differently than us, and I think you know, understanding Myers-Briggs personality type has allowed me to be at least cognizant of that and understand that there are people that are operating on different wavelengths and that's okay and to help, you know, me understand how I can best communicate with them. Um, so if you have the time and you're interested, it's definitely something that I would look into and just, you know, to learn about because I think it's interesting. But again, I just want to keep in mind and to reinforce that you know, it's not a simple test, it's not a simple concept, and there's more to it than just which letters are which, you know, characteristics. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely something worth looking into if it's something you're interested in. I find it particularly interesting, but you might find it ridiculous, I don't know. So, you know, do whatever you want. So if you're having the same thought that I had at this point, why I didn't just paint the entire background white and then stencil in black lines rather than alternating in a painstaking process between black, white, black, white, I literally have earthly no idea. Hello. So I feel like it's been like an eternity since I started doing this project, as you could probably have told, tell by the beginning of this video. My hair looks very different now because I impulsively chopped it off at some point between when I started this project and now. I haven't had time to really do anything in the way of painting or other creative projects or filming other than just like little bits here or there in the past several weeks and that's just because I've been working so much. I've been working like 13 to 14 hours a day and I don't really have a lot of time for me to just decompress and work on these projects, much less film and do all these editing stuff. But I actually just uploaded my first YouTube video where I talk about painting my table and showing that last night. And first of all, thank you to all 32 people who have watched it in the past 20 hours. I like actually surprised even five people watched it. So thank you so much for that. Now that I have that uploaded, it's kind of giving me a little bit of motivation to 
make the time and like force myself to make the time to do these things and to relax and to paint and, and film and, and do video editing and stuff like that because that's really what puts me in a better mindset it allows me to decompress after the day and I don't think I've been giving myself a time to do that so I am going to be doing that today I am going to try to get this project done because there's a lot more stuff that I want to film and work on and I'm really excited about doing it I just want to get this fucking thing done I'm ready to go and let's let's just get started shall we Next up on our INFP list is Gara, which I think is safe to say only applies to the Gara from Shippuden, not the version that brutally murders people indiscriminately. I think people find Gara to be an INFP because of his emotional breakthrough with Naruto. Once he learns to make bonds with and connect with people and work past his painful childhood trauma, Gara really uses this experience and cherishes the bonds that he does create with others, such as Naruto, and even attempts to try to understand other people around him as well. One example that immediately came to my mind for me was when Gara confronted Sasuke when he observed that Sasuke had the same evil look in his eye that Gara once held. His ability to empathize with Sasuke's feelings and his trauma prompted Gara to actually attempt to reason with Sasuke because he understood him and where he was coming from rather than just, you know, attacking him. Gara also attempts to seek the meaning of life and existence, and we see this a lot in the show. This is something like a big picture thinking that a lot of INFPs tend to do. Finally, we also see Gara as pretty quiet and reserved, and he attempts to observe people rather than just outright interacting with them, at least initially. For those with whom he does interact and he does have connections with, he is fiercely loyal and devoted to them, another classic INFP trait. We're moving to Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers, who I absolutely love because she's just so unapologetically herself. She's a believable INFP to me because she's also very quiet and reserved, and she spends most of her time imagining realities that involve horses and Jimmy Jr.'s butt rather than what's actually happening in the present. It's probably why Tina always seems like she flat out doesn't understand what's going on because she's usually too occupied with her own imagination. Imagination. She also tends to act with feeling first, and at least more so than her loose canon siblings, has a better ability to understand and empathize with people than just going out and initially criticizing them. The best part about this drawing, too, is that I, I did these little random lines around Tina, and they really inadvertently ended up working to convey a lot of Tina's constant state of angst and existential dread. So I, I really didn't mean to do that, but it really, it really kind of works in Tina's favor in terms of her character. So now we're working with Rose Apothecary from Schitt's Creek, and I just have to say really quick that when I started watching Schitt's Creek, I was able to binge it in about a week because of just how great it was. So if you're looking for a happy, positive, and wonderfully done TV show, go watch it. It's amazing. I share the same type with David Rose according to the internet, and that's why I'm making a little Rose Apothecary sign for my wall. David is self-admittedly not a huge people person, and that tends to see more of a big picture possibilities than what's actually practical and application, um, something that is both a gift and a curse for us INFPs. He wants to open his store, Rose Apothecary, for example, and he thinks of a name for it and the general concept, but he's completely stumped on what he's actually going to sell and how he's going to do it. Um, this is a classic example of the INFP dilemma. He also has a good heart deep down. He cares very deeply for his family, for his friends, for his fiance Patrick, um, and at the same time, he also appears very sensitive and caring as to what others think of him, which is another INFP curse. Um, so he's certainly a welcome addition to our INFP family. Now we're working on Nagato slash Pain from the Naruto franchise again, and I think he's the only person on my wall that you could consider to be evil, which is interesting because usually the typical INFP character in film and television is either the protagonist or the idealistic hero. And even though Nagato does have a redemption arc at the end of his timeline, he does start what becomes a, an eventual ninja terrorist organization, so I guess we'll just say that he's not a person perfect person. Um, Nagato holds deeply rooted values of wanting to create a world free of violence and war, which are things that he grew up with and were surrounded by. INFPs share this sense of idealism, although Nagato didn't exactly execute his world vision in the best way possible, but it's still idealistic nevertheless. But even then, I guess his N, you know, in intuition tendency to focus on the big picture goal of world peace doesn't really allow him to put as much importance or focus on the short-term consequences of, you know, totally leveling the leaf village 
And those little details, you know, sometimes escape the best of us INFPs. We also tend to see Nagato as a child being portrayed as very affected by the war and relies on his friends for emotional support and strength. Ultimately, when Nagato does decide to bring everyone from the Leaf Village back to life, he only does so because he believes firmly that Naruto holds the same ideals as him to restore peace and prosperity back to the ninja world. So I know this one may not be perfect, but this character from League of Legends is literally my cat's namesake and I found one list online saying she was an INFP, so do not question me, we're rolling with it. According to the lore, I think Lulu could fit, as a, fit the bill as an INFP or something close to it because she's so caught up in imagination and daydreams and it said that she literally gets lost in the woods because of it and she's terrible at sensing time because she's not very in touch with her own reality because she's so caught up with her imagination, which on some level really does relate to INFPs. I could see Lulu being other types for sure, but at the end of the day, like everything else, you know, it's hard to say for sure what figments of a writer's imagination are going to fit into particular Myers-Briggs types, so, you know, it, it's close enough, okay? Um, so I'm gonna just, like, talk, I guess, because I feel like this entire video is just, like, speed run footage of me just painting very quickly. I'm just gonna, like, shoot the breeze, you know. So I was perusing the Facebook the other day, and I happened upon a post from like Disney Plus or Star Wars that basically announced the cast of the new Obi-Wan TV show, I think? And it listed both Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen as main members of the cast, which I find fascinating because I knew that Ewan McGregor was interested in doing this, and I knew that there were talks of doing this Obi-Wan standalone TV show or whatever, but then um, The Rise of Skywalker, what is the word, imploded the franchise, and then they decided to put the brakes on it for a little bit, and then with the pandemic, but now it's back, and now Hayden Christensen is a part of it, which I find to be a very per surprising and perplexing choice for several reasons. I know that this time is supposed to take place between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope because apparently Obi-Wan just kind of chilled on Tatooine and like, you know, kept an eye on Luke or whatever until he was ready to train. I don't really know how much you can make with material like that in the meantime. Like in that time between, I don't really know how many interesting things can happen, but I'm, I'm very curious as to how they're going to portray Anakin. Like are they going to use Hayden Christensen in flashbacks? Or are they going to have him be, like, a young Darth Vader? Because I feel like that would make people upset and they should not do that. But I also feel like doing flashbacks would be weird because he is clearly, like, 16 years older than he was when he's supposed to be in the flashbacks when they would take place. So I have literally no idea what the fuck Disney's doing. Because people have been asking for an Obi-Wan standalone film and or a television series for a long time. And they're just trying to make the fans happy because, I mean, I would be very scared of the Star Wars fans if I were Disney and I would want to do anything I could to make them as calm as humanly possible. I don't really think it's going to be spectacular. Because there's also, in addition to the film canon, there's all of these fucking cartoon shows. I have never watched them before because I don't care. Like, I just... Mm. But I've heard a lot of people like them. I think that like follows its own canon, or at least one of them does, and I think it might make people upset if they either just do exactly what they're portraying in those cartoons, or if they're doing something different, because then people, people might be like, oh, you're doing something different, like, oh, this isn't canon with the expanded universe. So I don't really know what their plan is. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I still have to watch The Mandalorian now that I have Disney+. Plus. I've heard mostly good things, although my one friend who hates everything that Disney has ever touched in the Star Wars franchise said that it's not worth watching, but I feel like I should watch it just in just in case it's good, but I don't know. I find it interesting. I, I have heard rumblings, though, and by rumblings I mean from the person from Cox Internet who came to fix my cable two years ago. He saw that I had like a picture of Darth Vader hanging in my apartment and then he just started talking to me about the Clone Wars series for like a half hour. And I was like studying for my evidence exam and I didn't have internet. And I'm just sitting there like, 
aha, uh -huh, that's really cool, man. And he showed me this video of like old Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Maul fighting each other. And it's supposed to take place like a couple days before A New Hope takes place. And he's like showing me all this and I'm like holding ev like evidence note cards on my lap. Like, okay, can you fucking leave now? Cause I have to study. But he was telling me that apparently in the expanded universe canon, Darth Maul survives and he has robot legs because apparently getting cut off at the torso doesn't actually kill you. You survive long enough until somebody comes along and gives you torso, like a robot torso and, and robot legs because apparently no one's allowed to die in Star Wars anymore. But apparently because in Solo, a Star Wars story, we see that Darth Maul is in fact alive I guess that he's going to have an involvement in the Obi-Wan show or that was like intended by Disney to like indicate that he's going to be involved with other things as well and particularly this Obi-Wan film. I don't remember if I saw anything in the cast that indicated that but that's just my prediction and the thing is um, I would hate that. I don't know if I would I don't know if I care enough to hate it but I don't think I would enjoy that. And like I said, it just goes back to uh, these characters need to die. It's the same problem with Boba Fett. It's the same problem with Palpatine. We just need to let people die and move on. The fact that we feel like we need to explain this 20-year period of Obi-Wan and hiding on Tatooine, which I can't imagine being that interesting, is a little bit excessive. But like, it's just because people love Obi-Wan and they just want to see more of Obi-Wan. It's like, why don't you just show us things that are new and different and that might like expand our understanding? At least with the Mandalorian, I know he's not actually Boba that it's just like his allegiance of bounty hunters i guess i don't know i have to i have to watch it but it's not actually boba fett i know he's in it at some point and luke is apparently in it at some point which i don't know how i feel about that but it's somebody different i guess it's like a smaller story or they're attempting to be a smaller story at least in, i don't know I, I i don't know what i'm talking about i have to watch it it's focusing on something different at least a little bit different with obi-wan it's like okay, you kind of already had your opportunity to talk about him in the prequel, and then you fucked that up, and then now we're over here attempting to explain what sounds like a very uninteresting part of his life. Like, I'm not super enthusiastic about it, but I guess we'll have to see. If it's going to be on Disney+, Plus, then I'm, I'm guessing I'll have the opportunity to watch it at some point. As you can see, I just got home because Lulu is showering me with attention. So I just got back from Target. I have acquired my command strips, and now once Lulu has decided that it's time to get up, I'm going to go ahead and actually start hanging up my project on the wall. And I hope it doesn't suck, because that would be a real bummer. Hello? Okay, here goes nothing. Is that me or is that even? I feel like it's even. Oh, I have a lever. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see. It is pretty even. It's like a hair crooked, but it's still like the bubble's still in the middle. So we're just gonna fucking go with that because I, if we're gonna, you know, get into the nitty gritty with the details, I don't think this is gonna be a very quick process. Let's just continue and just use that as our standard. And all of the pictures are just gonna be a touch crooked, but that's fine, we're fine. Everything in my apartment's crooked, so it won't look silly. I mean, have you seen worse? Probably, maybe, hopefully. All right, keep moving forward, let's go what I'm doing because command strips are incredibly expensive and by incredibly expensive I mean they're like eight dollars and I'm just I'm mad about that especially for really light canvases or really small things I just fold the larger strips in half so that if that's like if it's a better value to buy a big box of large strips I just you know do this to make it a little bit more like it make to make it go a little bit further One thing too I forgot to keep in mind is like, not only do they have to be straight, but they also have to be like evenly spaced and then like center with like the horizontal picture versus the vertical pictures because otherwise nothing's gonna line up properly. And I don't think I have the mental capacity to do that right now after working how many hours I've worked this week. So I don't know, we'll see what happens.
Perfect. Okay. Okay, four down. Doesn't look terrible so far. I think I overestimated how large this was going to be, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I feel like that's my, my excuse for everything when I, like, have an impending sense of something not turning out well, and I don't really have the mental energy to do anything to prevent it. I just kind of, like, we'll see what happens. It'll be fine. That's like the INFP anthem right there. We'll just see what happens. There's flames, you know, going on in, in our in our lives in the background. It's just like, eh, we'll see how it pans out. We'll wing it. They're all like so ever so slightly tilted to one side, but if I attempted to correct it, I would inherently overcorrect it and just make the problem worse. So I just gonna leave them because you know that we're just gonna we're just gonna have it be slightly crooked and we're not gonna talk about it in the home stretch baby oh no oh no oh no 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 okay so here's the problem. Anticipated this being slightly narrower than it ended up being. I wanted it to be like dead center with my table and now it's like if the art project ended here it would be dead center with my table but now it is just ever so slightly not and I don't know if I should just go with it and just fix it at a later date or if I should just do it correctly now. <sighs> we'll just We're just going with it. We'll see what happens. INFPs, right? Maybe I could just like scooch my table over because it is kind of like not dead center with the lamp, the lamp. So I don't know. Maybe I could do that. Mm. Too much effort. No one's gonna look at this anyways. It's a pandemic. No one's coming over. It'll just be me looking at it and hating it because I know that it's not perfect. Is it possible to like work up a sweat on like, you know, opening command strips and placing them on small canvases? Because I think that's what's happening right now. And the last one. Okay, now they're all up. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a like a area like a far away. Oh that kinda looks nice. Wow, wow. Okay, like I kind of hate how high up it is. Like there's just space there. I don't know, maybe I can just add on to it. I think it looks good though. Yeah, no, that looks fine. I mean, it's, it's what it is. I didn't really want to do this project, but I ended up really liking it. Okay guys, that's going to be it for me on this project and on this video. I had a good time making this project, so um, if you want to see more from me, please make sure to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments what you think of the finished product and what your Myers-Briggs type is, if you happen to know that. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to head out because I need to go pay attention to my cat or she'll kill me. Okay, bye.